Half-Life, one of the most influential games of all time. If you're watching this, you most likely know the game, so I don't need to explain it. But with the game being 24 years old, things have obviously significantly progressed since then. And with the release of Half-Life 2 and with it the Source Engine, it was clear that the graphical fidelity was taken up a notch, or two, or three, or maybe four. There is a very clear upgrade between Half-Life 1 and 2, that should be obvious. And a few people thought, what would the original Half-Life look like if it was made in the Source Engine? Well, those people were probably disappointed when Valve released Half-Life Source. <laughs> Half-Life Source can be simplified as a copy-paste of the original Half-Life into the Source engine, now with cool looking water. And so because Half-Life Source was a huge letdown, a few people at Crowbar Collective said to each other, you know, remember that epic fail when Valve tried to make Half-Life in the Source engine? Yes. What if we remade Half-Life in the Source engine? Properly though. Well, guess what? They did. The result was Black Mesa. And damn, it's amazing. Hang on a minute, you're probably thinking right now, Yo, this game came out like two years ago. Half the planet has probably played it by now, so why are you talking about it? Well, yeah, you're right, but I only just now have played it for the first time after having it sit in my library for a year, so it's about time. Oh, and by the way, don't take the title too seriously. Half-Life is great, and you should play it. This video is kind of just me simping on Black Mesa. Bro, don't clickbait me like that again, you bitch. Right, so, Black Mesa. After having played it, and I'm sure 99% of you who have also played it will agree with me on this, Black Mesa is leagues above Half-Life Dumpster Fire. You can't even compare it to Half-Life Source, so just throw that idea down the drain, it's pointless. This is one of the best remakes I've ever played. I realize I should probably explain the difference between remaster and remake because a lot of people get confused or just don't know what they mean. So a remaster by definition is the exact same game just with updated graphics, sounds, and sometimes engine. A good example of this is with Halo. There's regular Halo and then there's Halo Anniversary Edition. Anniversary Edition is the exact same Halo game just with updated textures and models. In the Master Chief Collection you can press tab at any time to switch between the two instantly. But besides the changed looks, Everything else about the game is the same. That's a remaster. A remake is a complete recreation of a game from the ground up, usually with significant changes to a lot of things. Black Mesa is a remake because it changed a lot of things from the original Half-Life. Many layouts of the maps are different, many puzzles are different, the ammo counts for weapons are different, and plenty more. So that's the difference between remake and remaster for those who don't know. Also, besides being made in Source, Black Mesa says it also includes the Havoc physics engine. Not sure why though, because a Google search tells me that the Source engine uses a modified Havoc engine already. So, um, I don't know, maybe I misinterpreted that. Now you know this was probably coming, but the way Black Mesa looks is just surreal. Everything in the game is just incredibly detailed. There's so much detail that even on potato settings, it still brings my computer down to its knees and causes a blue screen. And even though the Source engine is 18 years old, it somehow still manages to rival some of the newer engines like the Unreal Engine. I feel like this game pushes the Source engine to its limits, kind of in the same way that Total Chaos pushes the Doom engine to its limits. Like, can you believe that this game uses the same engine as this? In Black Mesa, places look and feel as if you're almost there yourself. After the incident, you can see everything fall apart around you, and personally, I feel like it's presented here better than the original. Now I know that's kind of asking a lot from a game made in 1998 that looks like the Asteroids arcade game in comparison, but you know. And there are even some partial horror sections that look actually semi-scary, as intended. The outdoor areas are personally my favorite. The sheer scale of the place is super apparent. You can see jets fly across along with the alien equivalent. The weapon models are some of the most detailed I've ever seen in any game. Love it. Just like the original game, Black Mesa does environmental storytelling perfectly. And since Black Mesa is more than two decades newer, the ability to present more on the screen just adds to it. Like I said before, right after the incident, you can see the whole place slowly dissolving, shown through the scripted events and through the sheer amount of fire everywhere. One thing I like is that the sky starts out blue, and then as you progress through the game, it starts getting darker and dustier, which shows the passage of time of course, but also the current state of the environment. Slowly as Black Mesa gets overrun with more aliens and the army is losing, the air is getting full of smoke from the fires and dust because this is a normal day in New Mexico. Besides that, the same set pieces that were in the original are still here, like the introduction to the grunts, having devices explode, and having poor scientists getting KO'd. The inclusion of physics in Half-Life 1 because this is the source engine is a nice touch. But remember, the original wasn't designed with physics in mind, so in Black Mesa, plenty has to be changed to accommodate this. 
After the Resonance Cascade, in Half-Life 1, you're just walking through the place until you get the crowbar. In Black Mesa, the first thing you see are objects in your way, making you have to pick them up. The original doesn't have that, so it's a great way to teach players about physics without breaking immersion. Also, you know how in the original, they show you how to get NPCs to follow you? Well, in Black Mesa, this is delayed a bit, because just a few seconds ago, you just learned about physics, so they give you some time to fully process that idea. And since that was delayed, they also delayed getting the crowbar, because they used this guard to teach you about this mechanic. And in the original, you'd already have the crowbar, so you wouldn't even look at the guard. So they delayed some key aspects of the game to include new ones, and I think they did a perfect job of that. And because there's physics now, you can bet there are puzzles that involve that. But they're not too complicated. Usually it's finding an object that you have to attach to something, or plugging something in, and believe me, there are too many things you have to plug in in this game but I'll get to that later. There's also the using barrels that float up in water puzzles, but they're quite rare unfortunately. Oh, and you can't forget the usual source physics jank, getting stuck on props or not being able to jump for some reason. Yeah, there's plenty of that. Physics makes the world feel more interactable. Zombies can fling stuff at you like in Half-Life 2, and you can pick up flares to set zombies on fire, which is something the game encourages before you get the crowbar. Along with that, there's an achievement for giving toilet paper to a scientist. It's the little things, you know? I'll briefly mention the music because there's not much to talk about. There's like barely any music in Half-Life 1. In Black Mesa, they add quite a bit. In many sections, they add some epic music, usually during memorable parts or during big fights, like this section or when you get chased by a Gargantua, or when you're fighting the Gonarch, things like that. If you haven't played Black Mesa yet, it's important to know that you can't play Black Mesa like you play Half-Life. I learned that the hard way. There's a lot different with the weapons and AI in Black Mesa to where you have to play it differently. The first thing you may notice is that the grunts can move and shoot at the same time, which is something they couldn't do in the original. It's a small thing, but it has a big effect that I can't really explain. Your movement speed is slightly slower, which you might not notice. Along with that, the ammo counts for the weapons are lowered along with some slower reloads. Now that might seem a bit unfair, especially if you're me and you're used to just bunny hopping around the place with 50 rounds. But to compensate for this, many areas have more cover spots with ammo littered around or have been enlarged. So all of this means that Black Mesa has a slower pace than Half-Life, and whether that's a good thing or not entirely depends on the person. I think I like it because now that it's a bit slower, you have time to look around and take it and appreciate how good each place looks. Something that I do like is that while you can't bunny hop at Mach 10, bunny hopping still exists in some way. When you run, jump, and then crouch, you slide on the floor for quite a bit. So if you stay crouched, you can continue jumping while sliding, essentially bunny hopping. If you airstrafe as well, you can gain speed, making it faster than just running. It's actually easier than traditional bunny hopping in Half-Life 1 because you slide a lot. The only limit is that you can't make such sharp turns without losing almost all your speed, but it is still useful in a few cases, like when running from a Gargantua. Black Mesa is also a lot longer than Half-Life, almost double the playtime. If you've played Half-Life before, then Black Mesa will take you like 6 hours to finish, but if you haven't played Half-Life first, then it can take you up to 10 hours. This is because many sections have been stretched, with some new ones added that are sometimes good and sometimes not. One notable section is this one where you meet a guard, and with them you have to sneak around this hangar to not get spotted by a group of grunts, and you get an achievement if they don't spot you. Many people don't like this part, but I do. It's something extra, you know? The only gripe I have with it is that just when I'm about to reach the end, some grunt with Superman vision always manages to see me, even if I'm crouched. Not even crouched, I could probably no clip into the ground and he'll still see me. I already mentioned how the AI is a bit different, but it's not limited to only the grunts. And okay, I have very few dislikes of this game, but this is one of them. The assassins now shoot faster because they hold two guns now, and maybe it's just me, but I feel like they jump a lot more often, making them the most annoying enemy in existence. And maybe I just suck at the game, but I sometimes put a whole magazine in their face and they still just jump away like it was nothing. Like what the hell? At least with the grunts, they changed the layout of the maps to compensate, but for the assassins, they didn't do anything. Or maybe they did and I'm just not seeing it, who knows. And it's not just the assassins, the alien controllers now sometimes do this sort of side jump in the air when you shoot them, which is annoying, IMO. But also no matter how much you're moving, like you can run around the whole planet faster than a plane and their shots will still somehow hit you. Every time I encounter them, I leave that encounter with about 2 health and no ammo. Okay, rant over. There are actually new enemies that I haven't seen before. You'll see different types of hound eyes. There's one that deals more damage and has armor on. Wonderful. And there's also one that blows up when they get near you, which are intuitively called the Suicide Hound Eyes. You'll also see zombies in HEV suits, 
very interesting. And because they have HEV suits, you'll almost have to aim for the head because, you know, armor. And there are also these things in the Zen water, which work the same way as barnacles do, except they pull you down instead. And because of that, they're called beneathicles, which is probably the most genius name for an enemy, okay, don't at me. But these new enemies I mentioned, you'll only see in Zen. And speaking of Zen, there's no way I couldn't talk about it. I had to. Let's be honest, Zen in Half-Life 1 kind of sucks. It feels rushed, and that's because it was, so it feels kind of bland compared to the maps on Earth. In Black Mesa, Zen is completely redone. Almost everything is different. So everything you knew about Zen in Half-Life 1, just throw it out the window because none of it is the same. Before I got to play Black Mesa, I saw a few screenshots of the Zen levels, and I thought they looked amazing, so I thought I knew what to expect and wouldn't be as amazed when I actually got to play it. But honestly, playing the game and seeing Zen firsthand and not through screenshots is a completely different experience. Like, it hits different. This Zen is probably the most beautiful place I've seen in any video game. No wonder it took like 5 years to make. Like, look at this, like, it, I, Zen here actually has a diverse ecosystem. After all, this is supposed to be the homeworld for many aliens, and I doubt they could live in an empty place. There's a lot of plant life, and annoying animals to accompany that. I could honestly spend like an hour just looking at all the different life in Zen. Meanwhile, there are no plants in Half-Life 1. The amount of time you spend in Zen has been like quadrupled in Black Mesa. In Half-Life 1, you spend like 40 minutes in Zen, maybe an hour at most. In Black Mesa, you spend like 3 hours probably. And I don't mind, because it looks amazing. There's some amazing world building here too. You can see many Black Mesa facilities built here, showing that you're not the first one here at all. The original also shows this, but only through HEV suits scattered around the place. And that's it. Kind of boring. The fight with the gun arc has been overhauled to the extreme. In Half-Life 1, the fight was like only about 10 minutes, and lame like the rest of Zen. In Black Mesa, the arenas are much larger, partly because the engine can support it, but also because you need to use the long jump module to dodge when the gun arc charges at you. When you finish in the first arena, she runs away just like in the original, but now you have a section where you have to navigate around these small tunnels while she's hunting you down, and there's also a long chase right before you get to the final arena, conveniently shown through a line of fire. I just really like it. What's interesting is that you can also kill it with cyanogen, or just avoid the whole fight completely and run away. There are achievements for that. Zen and the gun arc I think are just polished perfectly. I'll also briefly mention the music in Zen here. The music in Zen is more melodical and calm which feels fitting with the overall look of Zen. While wandering around you'll just get drawn by the music. But it's not all calm. During the fight with the gun arc the music picks up in heaviness again as you get to the end of the fight. The combination is just perfect. So Zen is amazing. But there's only one problem with it, and that has to do with the interloper chapter. I'm really not sure how to feel about this chapter because there's a lot of good, but also some things that are just... no. It's still infinitely better than the original though, like that's just facts. The first no for me was that after recording it, my computer died which corrupted the footage. Thanks a lot. For one thing, Interloper and Black Mesa is long as fuck. It's an hour and 30 minutes, so it takes up a good portion of your time in Zen. Not that it's a bad thing, I don't really mind because it still looks bossin. It's just something noteworthy. One thing I do like is that it shows the lives of the Vortigaunts through more environmental storytelling. The game shows how they're being enslaved and the work that they're being forced to do. One good change is that it's now made obvious when a Vortigaunt is friendly or not. In the original, it was impossible to tell unless they started shooting you. In Black Mesa, the shackles that they wear will glow when they're being controlled by an alien controller, and they'll be in a more attack-ready position as opposed to just standing. Another cool thing is that halfway through, the game will stop giving you normal ammo, and instead add these green crystals that give you infinite energy ammo for the Gauss gun and Gluon gun, which I personally think is pretty interesting and unique. But that's all the good stuff about this chapter. There are a few things that I don't like. Remember when I said that a lot of the physics puzzles are just plugging stuff in? Well, they took that and cranked it to 11 here. There are so many plug puzzles that they start to get stale after some time. Like, it would be fine if there were only a few, but there's a bit too many of them. It's enough to where you'll be happy when you first see them, but by the end, you can feel that you've had enough of them. Alongside the infinite supply of plug puzzles, sometimes when you complete them, you get sworn by alien controllers, and I already said how I feel about those. There's also this specific part on the conveyor belts where there's just so much happening that you just can't keep up. Like there's 50 alien controllers attacking, there's a bunch of Vortigaunts that are aggressive, destroying the boxes will awaken the alien grunts inside making them attack you, and you have to destroy these little vessels that power the barriers so you can go through, all while all those enemies I mentioned are going after you. Like, just chill. But yeah, despite all the bad about Interloper, I still ended up enjoying it because I feel like the pros outweigh the cons. Of course, you can't forget about the Neolin. I've always felt neutral about the Neolin in Half-Life 1, but the way it's changed in Black Mesa I think makes it better than the original. First of all, he actually looks and sounds menacing and terrifying when you first see him. Three 
the arena is a lot larger and for a reason. There are no more of these pads that launch you in the air, so they give you more room to dodge attacks. In the original, the Neolanth will often teleport you to chambers, which are first of all a bit annoying, but also disrupt the pacing of the whole fight. In Black Mesa, there are no more teleports. Yay. Instead, the Neolanth has new attacks. This includes lasers coming out of its hands, these shots from the heavens above, these waves of fire, and sometimes bringing in vehicles from Earth and flinging them at you. And now with the large arena, you have room to dodge these attacks. The fight now consists of destroying these three energy things, I don't know what they're called. After that, destroy the puzzle piece that is his shield, then destroy these three crystals that he pulls from the ground to heal from, and after that just deal enough damage to him. The final result is an amazing view of his entire island exploding, just in time for you to meet the G-Man. G-Man is voiced by someone different from the original, but he still does a pretty good impression. G-Man's speech is the same, except that he's sort of translucent in the background while he shows you ruined areas, similar to the beginning of Half-Life 2. I approve. But in the end, Black Mesa is just an awesome remake. It's my favorite remake, not that I've played others anyway. I feel like it's the perfect combination of remaking Half-Life and changing certain aspects that make this possibly better than the original. Of course, your opinion on that may vary, and I do think that you should still play the original. Half-Life is a big nostalgia hitter, the old graphics have a certain charm that some people prefer, and also it's a big historical landmark. But for the two of you that are looking for something Half-Life related that's new, then I think Black Mesa is the thing for you. But anyways, bye. <laughs>